One quick thing before we get into the video, I've been thinking about doing some one-on-one -on -one production classes. If that's something you guys would be interested in, leave a comment and let me know. And yeah, let's get into the video. Welcome back to a new video. Lately, a lot of you guys have been asking for a mixing tutorial. So today I'm gonna go a bit more in depth and show you how to create a vintage Q Beats, Frank Dukes, Coop the Truth kind of sound. Let's get into it. So the mixing process really starts straight away as soon as you open your DAW and you choose that first sound. Today I wanted to make a Latin style Q Beats guitar sample. So I chose this nylon guitar and put in these harmonic minor Latin style chords. So that's a nice clean simple guitar but we want that warped vintage kind of sound so my first thought is i need to add some texture to this so i opened up the h910 harmonizer which is really good at giving a warped uh, detuned kind of feel so i've brought this knob down to 0.9 which pitches it down by two semitones i think one of the keys to achieving this sound is to keep it very subtle as you can hear the harmonizer adds a slight texture, but it's not too crazy and it's not too present. So after that, I wanted to glue the sound together and make it a little bit louder. So I added this uh, Good Hertz Evolve compressor. It's a very simple, easy to use compressor. You don't have to know too much. All you really need to do is turn this up or down to your preference. Uh, this this slider will allow you to kind of detune it. So I've left that quite low and lo-fi, it kind of cuts out some of the highs and gives a more lo-fi feel. As this is the main sound, that compressor really helps it stand out front and center and maintain its presence within the mix. The next I added this delay from Arturia FX. So I chose the bathroom reverb preset. It's just helped giving it a bit more depth and make it feel less dry. But again, I want to keep it very simple. So I kept the blend under half and the feedback around half as well. Next is this plate reverb from Arturia again. I chose the clean chorus preset, brought the width down a little bit. I brought the decay time almost to zero because I want to be so short and the blend almost to zero as well. If you click these arrows in the Arturia effects bundle, normally you can bring up these kind of equalizers that EQ the reverb itself. So the pre-delay is slightly up, which means it's not gonna hit exactly when the guitar hits. It gives the guitar a little bit of room to breathe. So I've cut around 150 Hertz on the low end of the reverb and around 800 Hertz on the high end of the reverb. This just gives it its own little pocket within the mix and it's not too doing too much. And finally on the guitar is this EQ. I would highly recommend getting an EQ like the Pro Q3 from FabFilter. A feature that I really love is that it lets you hear exactly what you're cutting out. So when I'm doing an EQ, I like to start with the low end. When I click this headphones button and press play, you can hear only the stuff that you're cutting out. So as I drag it up, you'll be able to hear more frequencies start to come in. So that's too high for me because you can start to hear the harmonic elements of the beat. If I bring it back down. So as you could hear there, there was no real harmonic elements, but those low end little pops and stuff, you don't really need those within the mix. After that, I just lowered some of the high end. And in this section is where the guitar is mainly hitting. I also lower that down because I thought it was a little bit harsh. So the next sound is this very soft pad from uh, one of the loophole kits. So this is a good example of a sound that doesn't really get heard too much, but it just helps to fill some of the frequencies and flesh out the sample. So this just has an EQ on. I've cut some of the lows and I've also cut around here just to kind of leave some room for top line melodies I'm gonna add later on. So next I added this flute, which is sort of a melodic accent on top of the sample. 
So first is this Delay Eternity from Arturia FX again, the Guitar Triplet Wah preset. It just kind of gives a really cool texture and gives me a kind of sound to build off of. Next I used this Shaper Box Pitch preset. I couldn't actually pitch it up any further within the piano roll because it didn't go that high. So I had to use this and it also gives kind of a cool texture as well. So as I said, I wanted this to be kind of like an accent on top of the sample. So I did this quite heavy reverb to drown out the sound and make sure the guitar was still at the front and center of everything. Next is quite a heavy delay just to make the sound a bit longer and fill out more space. After that, I added one of my favorite effects, which is the crushed preset inside cassette. And finally, this Good Hertz tremolo control, the slow auto pan preset helps it pan from side to side and just kind of gives it a bit more depth and pushes it back further within the sample. So next I wanted to fill the low end of the sample, so I did this Scarby Rickenbacker bass. Adding bass to samples is really up to you. Some people don't like to do it because a lot of the time the producer flipping the sample will EQ it out. But I like to add it just to see where I'm going with the sample and make sure the bass notes are correct and stuff like that. I haven't added any effects to this, it's just a very simple clean bass. So one of the next layers I normally look to add is a counter melody. Again, sound selection is very important for this. So I've chosen a nice vintage sounding piano. If you choose one that's a bit too clean, you're not going to get that vintage Q beats kind of sound. So I've just added a cassette with the chorus -y preset to that. It just helps create that vintage sound. It gives it a little bit more width as well. Again, I've kept in mind to be very simple and subtle with the sample. So obviously there's only four piano notes there. If you start adding too much, there's not gonna be enough room for the artist or the producer to flip it. So next I've added some percussion. I found these acoustic guitar hits online and just put them where the snare would go if a producer was making a beat on it. To that, I've added a bandpass EQ. I normally like to keep my percussion loops in and around the 1000 Hertz range. This seems to be kind of like a sweet spot where they'll sit nicely within the mix. And then after that is this light reverb just to drown it out and push it back within the mix. final element of this sample is some vocals. I've just recorded some very simple vocal runs and chopped them up to fill the spaces. So that was just the dry vocal. I've added a little altar boy, pitched it up by 12 and then brought the format down a little bit. I pitched it up to make it stand out a bit more within the mix and brought the format down just to create the texture and a more unique sound. After pitching it up, there's lots of low end to cut out because there's no frequencies hitting there. I've also cut a little bit of the high end out because my microphone was picking up some weird stuff from my laptop and stuff like that. So I wanted to get rid of that. Finally is this plate reverb. I've just kept it on the default preset. The blend is around half because I didn't want it too much and the decay again is quite low. One thing I do like to do on my vocals is keep the width quite low, which basically makes the reverb more mono. We want the guitar to kind of fill the stereo image and be quite wide. Whereas the vocal, I want to keep in one specific place and not have it fill too much of the stereo image. So those are all the elements of the sample. What I normally like to do when I'm finishing it up is add a sound shifter to the master channel and play around with the pitch until I find one that I think suits it and fits well. So as you can see, I've pitched it down by seven semitones. Pitching it down is normally the way to go because it allows for a more dark sound and it also gives the artist more room for their vocals to fill the high end. I'd recommend using the sound shifter rather than pitching each individual element down because the sound shifter is much quicker and also it allows you to keep the texture. Sometimes when you're pitching things individually up or down, they kind of lose or change texture. And to get that specific one that you want, 
I find using this sound shifter allows you to do that. One final thing that I like to do is add an EQ to my master. Here I've cut some of the lows around 40 hertz just to kind of tighten it up. And also you can cut out some frequencies that might be hitting that you don't really like. So as you saw there, Pro-Q3 actually kind of highlights some high frequencies and easily allows you to bring them straight down. So yeah, that's the sample and that's my thought process behind how I create the sound I want. I hope you guys picked up some tips that you can use to improve your samples with. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and a comment, let me know what you wanna see next and I'll see you in the next one.